joins the show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the 240 segment. It is Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City joining us right now on YouTube and Twitter streams. Mike, how are you doing today? Hey, Josh. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. So uh, I want to start with the Phillies with you because you know I didn't get a chance to talk to you yesterday about the Phillies, but uh, it, it was good to see them not get swept, right? You know, they... They went out there and went out against what I think is the best team in the National League, and they had two rough games, but then they came back and they found a way to get a win on Thursday. So to me, I think there's some positives to take from that. Yeah, absolutely, and I guess it's it's kind of what I wrote today, how I ended my um, story on the game today, uh, Press of Atlantic City, Press of AC.com. Uh, they saw what a, a what a winning streak could do and how quickly that can change their place in the standings. They won eight in a row and they went from four and a half out to first place, right? What they don't want to do now is see what a losing streak can do and how quickly that can change and impact the standings. So they had dropped two in a row to the Dodgers. You don't want to see that mushroom into three, four, five in a row. So winning yesterday, 2-1, getting that win was huge, especially, you know, I think this is a very key part of the Phillies' schedule. Three games with the Cincinnati Reds starting the night. The Reds come in, I think they're 62-54, and 54, which would put them in first place in the National League East if they played in the East. They got three games against the Reds, and then they go out west, three in Arizona, three in San Diego. I know Arizona's not any good. San Diego is good, but East Coast teams struggle uh, historically, when they go out west and the Phillies aren't talented enough to look past anybody. So you yesterday was a big win from the point of you wanted to stop that losing streak right there because, as we've seen, standings can change quickly. Also, how interesting was it that they, they kind of they kind of try to draw Ranger Suarez out a little more, get a little more from him in another start? And it seems like no matter what they ask him to do, overall he's pitching really well, Mike. <laughs> Well, you could say that's why Ranger Suarez is here and Spencer Howard is in Texas, right? Because Ranger Suarez, you know, didn't make the team at his spring training, you know, made the team out. Then he came in. He was the long man. Then he was maybe a part time starter. Then he was the uh, a late inning guy. Then he was the closer. Now he's a starter. So, uh, you know, one of the issues that. You know, supposedly people say that Spencer Howard did not fulfill his potential here was because the Phillies put him in a bunch of different roles. Well, that hasn't seemed to bother Ranger Suarez. All he's gone out and done is pitch and pitch well. And by drawing him out, he should be able to go 90 pitches next uh, uh, outing, maybe five, six innings after that. You're solidifying that starting rotation uh, which has made the Phillies a much better uh, uh, team. You're much better with Ranger Suarez and Kyle Gibson in the rotation than Matt Moore and Vince Velasquez, though I think we're going to see Matt Moore tomorrow, which is why yesterday's win was doubly important. Yeah, we're probably going to see Matt Moore again, which means they're probably going to have a, a chance to probably not win that game, but they, they're kind of stuck with him at this point, right? They're so waiting on Eflin to come back and a few other guys. Yeah, they got, it's a kind of a quirk of the schedule with the day off. And I think, uh, you know, just the way the schedule worked out, that they need a pitcher for Saturday. And, and it looks like it's going to be Matt Moore right now. But you could not continue the way they were continuing before that trade deadline with playing two games a week where you were losing 6 nothing or 7-2 in the fourth inning. You weren't going to survive like that. So, you know, Ranger Suarez and Kyle Gibson have stepped up here and really, you know, a big reason why the Phillies, uh, you know, begin today in first place. Mike McGarry joining us here on a happy hour Friday here on 97.3 ESPN. You can follow him on Twitter at AC Press McGarry. We're getting into the Phillies, a couple other topics here on a Friday edition. Before we get away from the Phillies, I want to ask you about Ian Kennedy. What are your thoughts on him? We, we, we have a, a more of a sample size on him now. The, you know, the first two games you were like, oh, man, this guy's giving up home runs. But since then, it seems like he's kind of settled into this role. Yeah, the first word that pops to my head is gutsy, right? <laughs> I mean... Uh, you know, that I guess it was um, Saturday a against uh, the Mets there uh, when the, the Mets had hit three straight home runs. He comes in, puts two guys in, then strikes out Alonzo and, and J.D. Davis back to back to get out of that jam. Yesterday, he has some issues. He gets squeezed by the home plate umpire who misses two pitches, ends up loading the bases on two walks and a hit batter and gets out of that jam. So uh, Ian Kennedy has not been perfect, uh, but he has been gutsy. And, uh, you know, again, another reason why the Phillies are more uh, able to think about making the playoffs now is I don't know if, if Hector Naris or even Ranger Suarez gets out of those two jams or reacts the way Kennedy did. So he's a veteran. He's 36 years old. He's seen, all, seen it all. 
and he gives him a gutsy guy with some mental uh, fortitude at the back end of that bullpen. And right now, you know, you, you'll take that, you know, the Phillies, because they don't have an elite closer, but they do have Kennedy, and he's he's an upgrade. So gutsy is the word that comes to mind when uh, when his name is mentioned. Now, sticking in the baseball arena, based on your Twitter last night, you were very tuned in to the Field of Dreams game last night between the Yankees and the White Sox, a game that I didn't watch live. I watched it on the replay after midnight for me. But uh, it, it was a cool thing visually, right? It was, it was just something that was cool. They definitely did a, a fun job with the Kevin Costner introducing the players coming out of the cornfield. But to me, the biggest thing of the game was, how about the ending? Tim Anderson with a walk-off home run. I mean, I love the fact that, I, I guess because of the, the acoustics out there, the hearing the home runs off the bat just sounded different on the television in that game. Yeah, I guess, and maybe you're right, the, the stadium, or I don't even know if you could call it a stadium, right. you know, the field was a, a lot smaller, maybe get closer to the action there. I thought it was a great night for baseball. I mean, the, 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 the baseball's biggest strength and its biggest weakness is that it's, you know, 162 games. It's every day. It's, it's part of your life. That's what's great about it. Uh, you know, when the Phillies don't play, they have a day off. You feel kind of empty that day. What am I going to do that night? Uh, no score to check on. But baseball's biggest weakness is unlike the NFL, which is, you know, this year it's 17 games, uh, you know, once a week. You know, baseball is every day. So anytime you can, baseball can do something to highlight or make a game different, which is what they did last night, uh, it's just tremendous. And, and uh, the setting and the shots and, and, and uh, Fox's presentation of it, Joe Buck's announcing of it, uh, you know, I, I thought it was all spectacular and it should probably become a yearly thing for baseball. I think in future years it'll be like um, the NHL and, the, and their outdoor games, right? The first time we saw that, it was great. It was snowing. Uh, they're still special. We still look forward to them. It won't be the same next year seeing the players walk out of the cornfield because we've seen it before, but I still think it's something that baseball should pursue and make a, make a yearly, uh, yearly happen. Cause anything they can do to sort of separate or make one of the 162 games special. I mean, baseball should definitely do. Yeah. My only thought on that, Mike is, and, and this is no offense to some of the other teams in baseball, but to me, one of the things also made the game special was it was the Yankees and the White Sox with the old uniforms. Like if, if it's the Diamondbacks or the Marlins, I don't think nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you 110%. I, I had a friend who was talking to me last night about, uh, we were talking about the games and, and I, that's one of the things I said to him. Uh, you have to pick the teams, right? Right. I mean, you know, in the movie, I know they went to Fenway Park, right? So maybe, and in the book, it's part of Fenway Park. So maybe the Boston Red Sox are in it. Right. I, I forget the team. I think Moonlit Graham, the doctor in the movie, played for the New York Giants. So maybe next year it's Boston versus the San Francisco Giants. But you're 110% right. I think you need those classic teams. As I said to him, I don't want to be turning and see Field of Dreams, you know, Marlins, Mariners, or, right. you know, Texas <laughs> Rangers, uh, Toronto Blue Jays in the Field of Dreams. you got to take your class classic major league baseball franchises that and maybe it would be even better if they have a connection to the to the story itself which the the, the white Sox did with shoeless joe jackson you know maybe you get cubs white Sox, maybe you get cardinals yeah. cubs that sort of thing you know yeah you're 100 percent right we, we don't want to see marlins uh you know oakland a's or or stuff like that this has got to be well thought out here well, I wouldn't mind the A's if they made them wear, like, the Philadelphia A yeah, uniforms. The Philadelphia A's uniforms, correct. Right. You know, maybe they may have the manager dress up like Connie Mack or something right. uh, <laughs> or a suit on the bench or something like, like that. Yeah, but you're right. It's got to be – it's got to speak to the history of baseball, and, you know, some franchises just aren't going to cut the mustard when it comes to that. Because, Mike, one of the things that makes, that makes the nostalgia unique for baseball is the fact that baseball has been around for – we're approaching what, like 150 plus years at this point for Major League Baseball. Like it's it's something that's been a part of Americana for so long. And anybody who's watched like Ken Burns' baseball documentary, you know, like there, there's something about the history of the game that you can't right. replicate unless it's actually right there in front of you. Right. And, and no other sport really has that. You know, the NFL to a degree, but the NFL doesn't go as far back as – 
as baseball. So again, you know, the, the Detroit Tigers with, with Ty Cobb, wasn't the joke during the movie that Ty Cobb couldn't play because none of the other guys liked him and stuff like right. that. So they didn't invite him to the field of dreams and stuff like that. There's, there's ways you can go there that I think you're absolutely right. Make it the classic franchises, capitalize on the connection to the book, the story, and make it sort of those classic teams with those old time uniforms and, and, and everything else. And, and then I think you've got a, a winning, uh, a winning situation out there. Yeah, my only my only concern with it was there was a lot of talk online, Mike, last night that apparently the ticket prices were getting out of control. They were getting into the thousands and thousands of dollars at one point. And you know, for no offense to baseball, but you know, it, it's it, you, you gotta you gotta get control of the ticket prices. You gotta you gotta make sure they're gonna get well, out of control. You know, if people are willing to pay to be there, especially for the first time, and the Yankees have a lot of fans, and the, and the White Sox have a lot of fans, and it didn't look like that many people were there. I mean, that's a problem that baseball. You know, baseball hasn't had that problem uh, in, in a while. Uh, you know, high demand for their tickets and people, you know, going above market for their tickets. So I'm sure baseball will take that situation and uh, and 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 deal with it, basically. Mike McGarry joining us for Happy Hour Friday here on 97.3 ESPN at Press AC Press McGarry on Twitter. Don't miss his must-win columns, and you got all these previews doing team by team for the high school football season. Mike, we're just a couple of weeks away. You've already broken down a bunch of teams so far. Is there a team that you have done a quick look at so far in your preview that stands out to you the most so far? Yeah, I think you look uh, again when it comes to sort of our end of South Jersey here. You know, Holy Spirit comes off an 8 0 season. They do have to replace Patrick Smith, the running back who was so great last year, who's now at Vanderbilt. But they return a lot of guys on the offensive side of the football quarterback, Trevor Cohen, wide receiver Elijah Stewart, all the big guys up front. They've got an experienced uh, defense with uh, Michael Francisco at linebacker, Mike Weaver in the secondary. So Spirit's a team to watch. St. Augustine's right there. You know, Kanye Udo, uh, uh, Division One running back, hearing from a lot of schools, he's right there. St. Joe is right there. They're kind of the usual suspects, right? Uh, and then for the public schools, I think Millville is a team to watch this year. You know, they've got Nate Robbins back at quarterback. He's a three-year starter. LeQuint Allen has uh, committed to Syracuse. And they've got a freshman, from what I hear, Lozier Brooks, who's already attracting Division One attention. He's a guy to keep a watch on this year. And Mainland should be fun to watch, right, with Jabril Mace at running back and Marlon Leslie at quarterback. So that's kind of a dynamic duo there for the Mustangs. So, like you said, a couple of weeks, I, I tell the coaches, it feels like we've had no summer, right? It's August, I don't even know, August 13th. Football kicks off August 27th uh, around here, two weeks away. So uh, it starts early this year, high school football. Well, my, my counter to that, Mike, would be before I let you go, I would say that we it almost didn't feel like we had a year last year because it started so late because of all the protocols. So you could argue we're making up for lost time. Yeah, absolutely. No one's complaining. And hopefully this year, you know, we get through the season. We'll have fans back in the stands. Everybody does the smart thing. We'll have the traditional playoffs, sort of South Jersey and uh, playoffs and state playoffs play out for these teams, which we didn't have last year. Uh, you know, last year we were thankful to play. We had a pretty normal spring season that went according to plan. Hopefully the same thing happens in the fall. Everybody's smart and uh, and we have another, you know, take another step towards the return of normalcy here and get back to a, our normal great, you know, Friday night high school football seat. Check out all the breakdowns over at PressOfAtlanticCity.com, AC Press McGarry on Twitter. Mike, great stuff today, and we'll catch you on Monday. All right, we'll see you later, Josh. Thanks.